Everyone wanted to track like this? Or maybe even like that? Or maybe even like this? What? What? Well, you can't really track like that because that one is on controller gameplay with aim assist. But anyways, let's explain tracking applications, how your mouse and mousepad impact it, some techniques used when tracking, and most common mistakes that you might be making. So... Tracking might be the most important aspect of aim across all games. You see, some games like Apex Legends or Overwatch primarily rely on tracking, but even games such as Valorant or CS rely on it without you even realizing it. To explain this, let's look at tracking in a bit different way. For most people, tracking is following your target with your crosser, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. Tracking is first, before anything else, reading enemy player movement. Remember that. So, why do they put it this way? In games like Overwatch that have high time to kill, tracking allows to stay on target so that you can constantly be applying damage while in games like Valorant, which is more of a precise shooter type of a game, tracking allows you to correct crosser placement and match click timing while enemies AD80 spamming. So why is all of this important? Well, it doesn't matter how precise your flicks or how great your crosser placement is, if you can't stay on a target when it's moving. I will explain to you two different tracking techniques that you can use, depending on a game you play, and I'm 100% sure you either never heard of a second one, or you did, but you thought it's a bet to use. Before I show you them, let me explain a baseline concept of tracking. Look at tracking as one constant mouse movement that is accelerating or decelerating based on target's behavior. If at any given moment your crosser slipped off a target, you never want to flick or jitter back to it, but rather smoothly and in one consistent motion adjust to it. A lot of people panic when enemy changes direction and instead of staying calm, they go from tracking enemy to jittering and flicking back to it. Now, back to two tracking techniques that I promise showing you. If you're playing a game like Overwatch or Apex Legends, you optimally want to keep your crosshair on the center of a target. By doing so, you have a fair amount of area around your crosshair that you can shoot and use, and even if the enemy changes the speed or direction of their movement, and you can't keep on a crosshair on a pixel accurate level on them, well, you're gonna have an easier time staying on an enemy. Does that make any sense? Hopefully it does. In other hand, if you're playing a game in which players tend to AD AD spam a lot, like let's use a Quake for example, what you can do is something called edge tracking. Edge tracking is basically keeping your crosser more towards the edges of an enemy player model. So why is this a good idea to do, you might ask me. Well, you see, if you initially started tracking an enemy, and you know that enemy player is gonna randomly change his direction to break your crosser position, what this allows you to do is giving you more time to react to that change in movement. Now, with this method of tracking, you need a bit more of mechanical skill, because now you're gonna have less room for error if enemy decides to just, you know, keep moving in the same direction as it initially started. This technique is mainly applied in aim trainers when people are going for high scores, but is usually not recommended for actual in-game aiming. I disagree with that because I believe there is no one uniform of advice that can be given to everybody, and with that being said, some people will end up finding this really helpful, while some of you might find this as a wrong advice. It is what it is. But you give it a try, and let me know what you think. When it comes down to a hardware, and with aim trainer players being mentioned, a lot of them will opt for lightweight mice and really fast mouse pads, and you seeing their aim, and seeking to have a same type of aim, it's natural for you to just want to copy their setups, but don't forget that these players that you're looking up to spend hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of hours practicing their smoothness and mouse control, which allows them to stay calm and have that type of aim. That's something that most people can't really do. You know, mouse control is hard to master. With lightweight mice becoming more popular than ever, practically everyone that is playing FPS games has a 50 to 60 gram mouse. Even you, you probably have one as well. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I'm not saying it's a good thing either. Let me explain. Light with mice might be good for speed and give you easier time flicking, but they also transfer your hand jitter to your aim much easier as well. You too probably change your sensitivity when you bought your first light with mouse, and most likely you change it for something slower. The heavier the mouse is, the smoother your tracking is going to be. But with that being said, the heavier the mouse is, your overall aim is gonna be slower. 
What we learn from this? Well, it's a sword with two edges, and you got to find out what sword works best for you. My general advice, and this is totally my personal opinion, you can agree or disagree with me if you want, but 70 grams mice offer best of both worlds. But unfortunately, most new mice are much lighter than that. But Mickey, no, most mice are 40, 50 grams. You can never even find a 60 gram mouse, yet a 71 you're recommending. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, hear me out. There is another solution to it. Your mouse pad plays a huge role in tracking as well. And since they are much cheaper than most mice these days, experimenting with different mouse pad surfaces, you not hurt your wallet as much as trying out a bunch of different mice. Well, unless you live in a country like I do, where ever salary is pretty bad, but you got my point. I can't really recommend one of a kind mouse pad that is gonna work for everybody, but an easiest way of finding out what might work best for you goes like this. If you're confident in your aim and you're able to play on high sensitivity, that means you have a good mouse control. Therefore, you can use advantages of a Faust mousepad like Warhack 4.0 or Artisan Hien if you prefer cloth pads. In other hand, if you're not able to use high sensitivity and overall find yourself struggling to track smoothly on your current mousepad, look for something that has more friction to it. Something like Artist Zero or Aqua Control Plus. Hopefully, you found this video useful to a certain degree. And if you did, make sure to subscribe because I'm thinking of making a dedicated video about explaining terminology used in tracking such as reactive versus predictive tracking, finger crutching, grabbing and so on. So, until the next video, like, share, subscribe, do me a fucking favor, make your boy famous and peace out.